darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love Shame no longer has a place to hide And I'm not captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Oh, I won't be shamed Oh, I won't be shamed Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's power. Oh, there's power that can break off every chain. There's power. Your name is healing, 
I was unpacking the vehicles and putting stuff back in the house and realizing, like, I grabbed this and not that. And that was weird. It's not something you often think about. And if you do, you don't think, oh, I'm going to grab you know, family albums and this and that. Those, those are the things I grabbed at all. I grabbed the stuff that was absolutely irreplaceable, the stuff I needed to move on in life. Um, and then realize, like, if that's all I had to start over with, was that the right stuff to grab? And I feel like for the most part it was, but I'm still unpacking like what that priority was like. Um, but that's been a stronghold in my life over the last few years, trying to figure out where my priorities are and where they should be, where God wants them to be. So that speaks to me this morning that he can break those strongholds. And that something that we've held is something that build up this tower and this wall that protects us, maybe something that in fact is not protecting us at all, and he needs to break that down, and um, he needs to shine through the shadows on that. And I think the key to a lot of those strongholds is just realizing who the Father really is, and the love that he has for us, the, the passion that he has to see us be who he wants us to be.
years I've had a few dark days, dark mornings that start here, uh, and there's been one man who has poured into me like no other, and it's a great honor to have you here, John. Uh, I don't think he has any idea what difference he ma- knows what his words made to me on those days, and what he spoke into me about being a warrior and being a lion on those days, on the days that I didn't feel like that, right? Because there's a lot of those. And so I can't go any further unless we gather around John and pray over him. He's in a battle. Uh, This man is precious. He's a precious soul of our king. And he's special to me and so many men in this room. So if we could gather around John and pray, I'd really appreciate it. He has his two sons here today, and I'm so thankful. We pray over you, brother. So the scripture that uh, I believe I want to read over you, which is um, special to me for sure, uh, is Hebrews 4, 14, Jesus, the great high priest, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Abba Father, Lord God, 
just as the men peeled back the roof and brought their friend to meet you in an overflowing house. Lord, we just desire to bring John to you today. We need your healing, Yeshua HaMashiach. You are Jesus. You are the healer. You are the one. You are Jehovah Rapha. So, Holy Spirit, we pray that you come and you move and you do what only you can do. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for our brother John and the spirit that you've given him. Lord, for Pina and Joseph and Jonah. Lord, for this family and the special place they hold in our hearts. Lord, we know that they mean even more to you. And Lord, right now, you come to the one. And so we just ask that you would be here present with us right here, right now, as we lift up our brother John to you today. Lord, we need your healing. We ask for a miracle. Lord, whatever way that you want to bring this about, your healing, we pray for it, whether it be through medical doctors, surgeries, technologies, Lord, in this universe, you created it with a word. Lord, you know the time that you have for John on this earth, and you know all that will be for eternity with John, with you. We submit to your will. You are sovereign God. We ask for your healing now. We love you. And we have, by the stripes, you tell us we are healed. So Lord, we pray for your healing. Spirit, in mind, in our, in our physical bodies, in relationships, in all facets of life, Lord, we need you. We need you now more than ever. Each one of us gathered around right now, we need you, Lord. And we just humbly submit with broken hearts and bent in need that we need you. We love you. And we lift up our brother John to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing right here, right now. Lord, you tell us, as it is in heaven, it shall be here on earth. What we loose here on earth, you loose in heaven. What we bind up. So, Lord, if there is any iniquity, any, any sin, any, anything that's holding back, Lord, we bind it now. We call it out now. It's under your authority, Jesus. Everything in this earth, every aspect of physics, chemistry, biology, it's under your authority. So we just ask you, take charge, take over. Be free to do what you can only do. In your blood, we are healed. Not not just for sick men to be well, but to be alive from death to life. We love you. Thank you, Lord. In the blood, in the name, the precious power of our high priest, Yeshua Hamish. Jesus Christ, our King. Amen. Thank you, Lord. very special. Thank you. Um, that was a great honor. Um, so we started this thing that's really, really cool out in Owasso, and it's the mirror image of this, but a little different. Uh, and there's some really special people over there that I get to spend time with on Thursday mornings. So I get to get up at 5 a.m. on Thursday and Friday, but I love it, and you guys know it. And one man in particular who is almost the same grade of sandpaper that Frank Khalil is, (laughs) but just a little more loving. Where's Frank? Oh, there he is. (laughs) Okay, see? Sneaky. Uh, but I love this man. I've been with him. I've been when, with him when he has said uh, what I would consider some incredibly gre- aggressive words to another man. And that man's eyes got this big. And, and he said, uh, you know, Tim, uh, you're not wrong. Uh, 
He is a friend. He is a brother. He's someone that I admire. He's seasoned, and he's been around around a bit, and he's going to share with us today. Tim Rich, thank you, brother. Thank you, Chris. Man, thank all of you guys. What a great worship. Nick, right? Man. And, and the prayer, John, I know you felt it. I felt it. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you guys asked me to come back. I came back because you guys asked. And I have a, a update on my story, and I know that all of you weren't here the last time I spoke. But I'm not going to... And I'm kind of reading my story. I want to tell my story from my heart. Because this is a heart issue. This is about me letting God stir my gift that he gave me in, in my heart. And uh, I want to share a little bit about myself so you guys know who I am. Like, like uh, I've been married for 48 years. My anniversary was Wednesday. Uh, my wife uh, and I are happier today than we were for many years. We're stronger today in the Lord than we ever have been. Uh, I've got three children, seven grandchildren. I ran a McDonald's restaurant and worked for McDonald's as a crew person all the way up 52 years. Sold my stores three years ago. <clears throat> and if you had asked me then who I was, I would tell you that I'm a McDonald's franchisee. And in fact, in meetings and groups, I would tell people, yeah, if you cut me, it won't be blood, it'll be ketchup. I was like, and I thought that was pretty cool. I came up with that one. And I sold the business, and somebody asked me to come to Anchor in Owasso. That was in February. I'd sold it in November, the last day of the year. And it wasn't by chance. It wasn't by coincidence. And I started uh, to attend. Someone asked me to go to a journey, and I went to a journey. And I, I pretty much was still in a checklist mentality. Check it off. Okay, I'll do this. I got time. I can do it. And going through and reading that little book, and if you haven't done it, how many of you have been through Journey or are going through Journey now? So what I want to talk to you today about is that part in the expressing living it out Gabe's principles, the, the third principle, living it out at home. Uh, and, and how it affected me. I, I, after I went to a journey, I, I guided a journey, and then I guided a, another journey, and then I did a couple's journey. And when I did the couple's journey, uh, it did change me because my wife was there right next to me. Uh, powerful. So if you have an opportunity at the right time in, in your lives, that would be great. But those principles, Gabe's principles are pretty, uh, if you change it to the next one, there's three things that he says in, in Gabe's principle, number three. Uh, let me read it to you so I don't get stuck on my notes because my notes are only the notes. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. That's the first one, the first thing in that. Uh, that's powerful. This is my wife. Uh, that's Patty. Uh, we were in Washington, D.C. in this picture. Uh, we had been asked to come to the Bible Museum, the Museum of the Bible, for a thing called Journey of Generosity. And uh, I was like, okay, this is crazy. But I spent two days with uh, the Green family and with, with some crazy spiritual people and it changed me and what they were doing was just what we did in journey 
they're learning to listen to the Holy Spirit and allow the gifts that God has given us to be unlocked. So it was powerful. And so we, we had a great time, and, and we've, we've become close. And part of the responsibility of living it out in our lives and, and the journey is do that with your wife first. That was a challenge because my wife thought that she was a single mom. It wasn't like we did 52 years together. I did 52 years working 80 to 100 hours a week minimum. Uh, if it didn't have an arch on it, I didn't do it. I didn't mow the lawn. I didn't take care of the sprinkler systems. I didn't raise my kids. I remember not too long ago asking, washing the dishes with my daughter. Uh, and I think I got a couple pictures of my kids here. I just want you to see them because they're real. They're real to me in my heart. I want you to know how these things that we're doing today are all interconnected. The songs that Nick sung, the prayers that were given, the things that are on our hearts. This is not by coincidence that you're here. And I'm not sure who you are, but I know this is for somebody here. And I know that it was for me to share. Sharing my story is part of what God has told me to do. Uh, because when we do, I hear your story, and we grow. We allow the Holy Spirit to listen or to work in our lives. So that was, you saw pictures of my daughter, my oldest son, and this is, this is my daughter, Heather. Uh, we, we together, we coach a, a, a competitive baseball team. Uh, it's really powerful. Uh, this is my oldest son and uh, my sons. This is, okay, this is the miracle baby from my middle son. This next picture is my middle son. This is Josh. And when I first came, the first journey or the first anchor, Cade came to it uh, because they didn't think anybody else would. They asked people from here to come. <laughs> I was like, that is crazy. And nobody thought anybody would come out there. The place had like 40 people the first day. And I sat next to a guy named Dave Trulock. You guys might know Dave. And I shared on my heart that my son Josh uh, had been going through eight years of IVF, didn't have it, and had lost faith in, in the Lord uh, and only was trusting in science and didn't believe that God was real or that was good that didn't know any of that, even though he knew, but he, he didn't accept it. And I, I was not there while he was being raised. I didn't know that he had braces. When I was washing dishes with my daughter, my granddaughter said, hey, I got to get braces, my 13-year-old. And I said, well, is any of you? I said to the, my boys and my daughter, did any of you guys have braces? And they said, yeah, two of us did. That's why she thought she was a single mom. Uh, I was focused, and I was successful by the world standards. Uh, but I wasn't close to the Lord. Until the last few years that I ran the business, the last 15 years, we really did dedicate the business to the Lord and, as a ministry. But I was still so ingrained in running it that I never really did what Gabe's principles say. It's really not Gabe, it's, it's the Lord. This is, this is the Lord talking to us guys. And my wife, that relationship has gotten so much better in the last three years. So that's good news. We're not getting older and growing apart, we're getting older and wiser and listening to the Lord together, which is so powerful. My daughter, she teaches uh, Tulsa BSF. She's a, a teaching preacher there, uh, and she writes her own uh, doctrine, or her, own, uh, her own stuff on a weekly basis. She's a powerful woman of God, and I lean on her for a lot. And she, she listens, and we have a, a, a personal relationship. Uh, and... The other part of Gabe's principle is live it out with your kids and live it out in your community with those that every person 
Whether you like them or not, you live it out with, with them. And I have had so much joy in sharing my experiences and writing critical plan or uh, business plans, strategic plans for not-for-profits. I have 14 of them that I'm working with. I love it. I have several uh, businesses that are mentoring, and I'm, I'm loving doing that. I'm just giving them my time and sharing my experience. About a month ago, uh, I, got, I heard a, a uh, Jonah was, there was a message from Craig Grishel on Jonah. And he talked about something that just crushed me. He talked about when Jonah went to the boat and decided to leave and go 3,000 miles away from where he was supposed to go, which I didn't know was 3,000 miles. He left and left, went that far. And then he did, he did eventually, obviously we know the story, he did eventually obey. But delayed obedience, the whole concept of delayed obedience uh, was opened up in my mind. It was there. Delayed obedience is sin. It's disobedience. It's not, and I did not, I skipped over my relationship with my boys. Superficially, I did not do that. So I didn't do what I should have done. I did what I wanted to do. And my boy's relationship with me was weak anyway because I wasn't there. And I realized that I wanted them to have the same, I wanted them to have the same experience I had that uh, with the change that the journey had done for me. I even asked my son, and he came to my one of my journeys groups. It wasn't the same because we didn't have a relationship. I had a better relationship with the people that I was working with in these five one or four five five one C's. So it was I was delaying obedience to God in that relationship, and. I embraced the world. I embraced the people that God put in my life, but I didn't with my sons. So I, I asked the, my anchor group to pray for me uh, and to pray that I would change. And I didn't know what was going to happen. I, I had no idea. That was September 20th. And the next day, uh, things began to change. And I changed because I decided that I was going to put myself aside and that I was going to be obedient to what God had, had asked me to do a long time ago. And they're 46 and 42. They're old, they're old compared to when I, when I was young. And, and they're I know time is short, and I don't know how to solve it. I, I'm like, what do I do? How do I solve this? And I realized very quickly that just like when I started guiding a journey group, it's not about me. It's about, it's about him. It's about him leading. The solutions are in his hands, and I have to trust. And I, I wasn't trusting, guys. I wasn't trusting God to lead my family, to lead me in developing this relationship with my sons. And when I turned it over to God at, at that anchor and gave it to him, I uh, things changed immediately. It wasn't like there was a, a delay, but it was an eye-opening for me. My son Josh... Uh, called me. We had the opportunity to go do some golfing next year and we signed up for it and he said he said, Dad, well maybe now you can go practice with me because I've been asking you for six months to see if you could play golf. And I was like, oh, I was crushed. I had not heard it. I was listening to my wife, listening to the people I was working with and I hadn't heard my son. And I said, yeah, let's do that. And I didn't know how to do it. I talked to Pastor Richie about what was going on, and 
He said, just listen. Best advice I've heard, but don't talk. <laughs> My wife tells me that all the time. Just listen, and Holy Spirit will fill you, but listen. And so I went out to the range. We went out to the range because I'm, I'm a decent golfer, about 120. Uh, but I, I didn't, we're, we're going to Scotland to play the eight courses over there the Lynx courses, and that's next September. So it's a great thing to look forward to, but it's the time between now and then that I'm looking forward to. I, I went to the, went to the I mean, it was, it's really hard for me to listen to my boys. We're par, I'm parking in the lot, in the parking lot. We just went to La Fortune. I'm parking in the parking lot, and my son's standing there, and I said, oh, great, this is great. And then he starts telling me how to park my truck. You guys ever have anybody tell you, like your wife, how to park the truck? Uh, is that straight or whatever? And he's out there directing me, and I'm like, I can do this, son. But I'm like, I was in the truck, and he couldn't hear me. And I just said, Lord, just let me, let me, let me survive. And then we get onto, the, we get onto the range, and he says, well, Dad, you don't know how to hold a, a golf club. Let me show you how to do it. And, and gentlemen, I did. I kept my mouth shut. And I listened to my son tell me things. And I did everything he asked me to do. And we did that for two hours. And we, and we started. And actually, I do have a better grip now. <laughs> but we spent two hours talking about what he wanted to talk about. But we began a relationship. Uh, it, this was a, a strained relationship for a long time. I did, you know, you know I, at one point I was in a, a fist fight with him on an aircraft carrier in, in the Atlantic. And it was crazy. That's how far we came to being there listening to him. So... It's powerful. Uh, God is answering that prayer. And my other son, Christopher, uh, he showed up at my house the Sunday after I had gone through this whole message with my wife had gone, and she's totally on board, which I never used to do, guys. My son call, just shows up at my house, not with his four kids. He just shows up by himself. And I was like, where are the boys? And he said, I just want to talk. It's powerful. He he sat down. He said, "Dad, I'm, I'm having trouble with my with my finances. I think we have to sell the house. I, I don't think we have enough money for groceries." She, he's broken, and he just wants to talk. And it's been twenty days of loving on his family, loving on him, and listening. I didn't know what was going on. So I would tell you guys, you can't, you can't skip a step. You can't do it by a checklist. You have to really live it out. You have to live out your relationship with your wives, with your children, and then with those people that God puts in your life. It's sometimes a lot easier to talk to somebody who's a stranger and tell them exactly what you need. And Chris, you're not a stranger, but I hear what he says and I understand and I can tell him what I think. And he says, well, that's so powerful. He was blown away and he's in tears. And I'm like, what are you crying about? And it's, it's powerful, but that's not as powerful as the relationship with your children. So don't, don't overthink it. Uh, just do it. Uh, I would tell you that uh, those boys are precious. That's, that's the two of them. And one of my grandsons, I have seven, and they're precious. But I want to know if they have braces. I want to know the things in life that they do, that they struggle with, and I want them to share that with me. And I want them to see Jesus in me. I am a child of God, changed by men working in my life by me allowing 
the going through the journey and allowing me to listen to what God has planned for us. And I'm not an orphan. I have, I did, didn't even know I was an orphan, but I was. And I was changed. I want my children not to think about me as a McDonald's owner operator or whatever. I want them to know about Jesus. I want them to be able to tell the story of how I love Jesus when I die. Time is short. People are lost, including our families. And your story matters. Share your story with someone. Listen to their story and be changed. And focus on those people that God's put in our lives today. Our wives, our children, and everyone else in that order. That's all I got. I'm out of time. I don't even know what time it is. 7.34. I'm past four minutes past. So, guys... Uh, thank you for asking me to come here. I love to keep coming because the music is better here. And the prayers are powerful. I know they are. It's not coincidental that you guys are here and that I get to talk to you. So God bless you. Wow. Luke, it's you, man. Sorry, Nick. It's Luke. <laughs> it's the special coffee that they drink before we get here. Yeah, there's a different... Yeah, that's, that's not what they drink, Tim. If you drink what they drink, I promise you, you'd be singing that good too. <laughs> you, maybe you ought to walk back there and put a pinky on their cup and taste it, see what's in it. Um, man, look, if you're here today and... You need a mentor in your life? Catch Tim Rich before you leave. You need a man that's got a sweet spirit that will be genuine and raw and real with you? Talk to this man right here. He's a lot more than what he told you. Uh, he's a beloved son of the king. And you know, it's never too late, is it, to discover that. And he and I were talking this morning just for a bit and man how often do all of us neglect those that God has entrusted to us we all do it you know you as you were sharing it reminded me of my little girl Grace when she was five and I was well on my way to chasing everything else and I'll never forget pulling out of the driveway you know we only had her and man, it was a struggle. And God gave us her, and she's five, and I had missed it, all of it. And I'm pulling out of the driveway because I'm late to work. You know, I was the cool guy flying the whirly bird. I got to get to, and I pull out, and God's like, what are you doing? And I turn around, and I come back, and this little girl is standing in the driveway with her big curly hairs, big brown eyes, just standing there like, Dad. You left too fast. She had that look on her face. And I pulled back up, and I'm sure none of you have experienced this, but the, the Uno, Uno's card game, you know, we had a, a Bible character Uno card game, and she had a card in her hand that she wanted to give me. So I pulled back up, and I hugged her, and she handed me that card, and I didn't look at it. I stuck it in my flight suit, and I jumped back in the car, and I left. Well, later that night, I'm flying. And uh, we, we alternate, and it's my turn not to fly, and so I can, you know, my hands are free at this point, so we don't crash and burn, and it's the last flight, it's 2 a.m., and I pull out that card. I'll never forget it. And I turn it, and I look at it, and it's the character of Jesus. And I'm thinking, what is my five-year-old trying to tell me? I promise you, it wasn't because I was being Jesus. She's saying, Daddy, I need you to be like Jesus. It changed everything for me. So when this man tells you that he's now having real conversation with his boys, and by the way, you do park better, just so you know, um, it changes everything. 
Because he's in, God has entrusted you with those boys and they need to hear about Jesus from who? From their dad. So don't miss it, guys. And I know a room, this many guys, I know it was some, the Lord spoke to your heart this morning. Who in your life that's right in front of you, you know, yesterday anchor, you know, Nate challenged us with, you know, who are you chasing? Who should you be chasing? And who's chasing you? Ask yourself that. And I hope that you're always chasing Jesus first and foremost in his righteousness. But you should be chasing those that he puts right in front of you. And it's those right there when you first get up that he's entrusted to you. For sure, your spouse. But your children, and by the way, they're never too old. Some of you are sitting here and maybe you haven't talked to your grown children in a while because you just don't. Maybe today's the day you pick up the phone and you call them. You be that beggar person just to tell them, I love you. Maybe you don't even mean it, but you do it anyways. Okay, start somewhere. So anyhow, as we close, um, we always say, if you're here and you've not read a copy of this little book, you're not plugged into a journey group. Guys, there's lots of journey groups launching right now. Get involved, okay? Uh, you just said a story of a man that, that took a chance to come to an anchor and plug into a journey group, and today he's not the same than the, as the man that he was three years ago. So I ask that you do that, okay? I want to pray with you guys. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus, for leading us father thank you for giving us uh, an example for us to to follow help us to trust you father and to give over to you every bit of our lives all the decisions and all of our actions and all of our thoughts fill us holy spirit with your wisdom and comfort that only you can give Thank you for these men. Thank you for this time. Help us to use it wisely. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. As you get with someone to pray, I do have two requests. I'm going to be selfish this morning. Well, first of all, continue to pray for our brother John. By the way, you boys, thanks for taking the time to bring your dad here today. You have no idea how much that means to us. And uh, continue to pray for him because God, God's on the move in John's life. Um, and I have two more requests. There, there's a little girl who's the daughter of a worship pastor in Arkansas at Nate's church. Some of you know Nate Sweeney. Uh, it's Daniel. Daniel has a little girl n- named Lucy, and Lucy is eight years old, and she is battling leukemia. Oh, man. She's eight. She's fighting for her life. God is at work. But um, I just felt in my spirit this morning that I would ask my brothers, maybe the first prayer you do this morning is you pray for Lucy, that God would have his way in Lucy's life and bring healing upon her. And I do ask, because I have often, I ask that you pray for for my daughter, Grace. She's been battling uh, pneumonia all week. Um, and, you know, it's it's funny. We don't We don't get shaken like we used to when stuff happens with Grace, but... Boy, it's been a rough week for her. So if you pray for Lucy and for Grace and continue to lift up our brother John, we greatly appreciate you. Take some time to pray with each other. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you next week.